today's jargon term, as you see there on the screen, is visual supports. Um, what exactly are we talking about with autism? So let's take a look at what our actual definition for visual supports are. Written words, pictures, and or icons that deliver information in visual medium. Okay, um, that's great, that's exciting to me, but I don't really understand from that definition, how am I using it, what's it do, and why is it so important? So let's take a look at what our working definition is. Our working definition is things that we can see that enhance the communication process. So visual supports are an amazing thing. If you th we, we use this as society, right? We use this all the time, and yet we don't always think about how crucial and important it might be for our kids on the autism spectrum and how often we can use it. Now, any of you who've ever traveled internationally at all, and you know that there, you're in a place that has many different languages, or even, you know, let's say that you're in your country of origin, but it's in a hub in a city where there are lots of people who speak lots of different languages. We live here in Los Angeles and we, you know, it's like the UN here. There's so many different languages spoken. So when they hang street signs, they don't try to just make it for English speakers, right? Because that would be foolhardy. We want everyone to abide by and be able to process what's happening on the street signs. So they have very iconic uh, figures on the street signs that help us to understand what's happening. Perfect example of this if you've ever built something from Ikea. Ikea, their instruction manuals have no words in them. Uh, it's all visual support instruction manuals. You gotta love Ikea, right? <laughs> And, and sometimes it takes a minute to figure out now, you know, why, why is the little, uh, you know, humanoid figure doing this with a big X through it? Oh, okay, we're not supposed to do that, right? Um, but it helps us to know what to do and what to do next without using uh, language that is specific uh, to, a, to a certain type of language. For our kids who are on the autism spectrum who don't yet have language or language is just emerging, this is a way that we can communicate to them. Um, really fabulous and there's no end to what we can do. We can make a visual support um, schedule and hang it on the wall or put it um, on the, the back seat. Uh, I know somebody who has uh, a little Velcro thing that goes over the back of their, their seat, their front seat, so the child can see what's happening next. Um, teachers can use this on their, their boards. They put up a things, you know, showing, you know, playtime is, is this time, and then uh, we're going to be doing writing at this time. So uh, anything that is visual that helps us to know what's happening or helps us to communicate something counts as visual visual support. Now even text is visual support, right? So as the child begins to read, we can take some of those humanoid figures and add text to it. And it is a way to help build language and pair the, the text with the picture. It is amazing what we can do with visual supports. The thing that I always like to remind everybody is picture when you're driving someplace and you don't have the directions and you're driving away and the person is sitting next to you and you say, where are we going? And they say, oh, I know, I'll direct you how to get there. I don't know about you, but I immediately, my hackles raise and I go, because uh, are they gonna tell me I need to get over three lanes when I don't have enough time to get over three lanes, right? I need a certain, I personally need a certain amount of time to get over three lanes, maybe perhaps more than they do, right? We all have our, our way of, of negotiating things, right? So I wanna know at least three steps ahead. Imagine if your entire day, your entire world, you were being motored around by other people and you had no say and no understanding of what was coming next to you. How frustrated would you get? And would you overreact to something that happened that maybe if you knew where you were going, it would be like, well, that's annoying, but I'm not gonna overreact. I have seen grown adults throw a tantrum in a car when somebody won't tell them where they're going. Yes, um, that's what it's like for our kiddos on the autism spectrum.